In this fourth video on OTC derivatives, we're going to take a detailed look at NDF or non-deliverable forwards, which are aggressively traded by hedge funds. Because as you know, hedge funds are looking to earn extraordinary returns on minimal investments through a very high level of leverage. Let's understand the concept of non-deliverable forwards. Let's take an example of a USD KRW. KRW standing for Korean won NDF. And then let's explore it back towards understanding what are the key terms in an NDF structure. An NDF is a forward contract. That means it's beyond the spot market. So in any market where the delivery takes place beyond the term spot market is called as a forward market. Therefore, forward markets can be for something as short as one week or even as long as six months. Uh, NDF is an OTC product, OTC standing for over-the-counter. Over-the-counter implies that the product is directly rooted between the buyer and the seller and there is no stock exchange in the middle. Since there is no stock exchange in the middle, the contract is customized to meet the requirements of the counterparties to the trade. The third characteristic of NDF is that the largest market for NDF is in FX currency pairs that are very illiquid. These include currency pairs like USD KRW, that is the dollar Korean won. It could be USD INR, that's the Indian rupee. It could also be USD CNY, that's the Chinese yuan. All NDFs are cash settled. Cash settled implies that there is a notional amount that is taken into consideration and the settlement of the NDF takes place in a single currency, in most cases, that is the USD. An NDF is a direct contract between the buyer and the seller. This takes place in, and therefore it's an OTC product. This takes place in an offshore market. An offshore market is a market in which the currency is not the home currency. So the distinction between an onshore and an offshore market relates to the currency which is traded. So in the case of an offshore OTC market, the currency is not the home currency and therefore NDS normally are traded in countries outside of the home currency. Let's take an example of a USD KRW. KRW is the uh, symbol for Korean won. And let's understand the terms and definitions of a NDF structure. The buyer and the seller enter into a contract to trade in USD KRW NDF. Let's say this takes place in an offshore market in like the UAE. Okay. So my question to you is, can you identify the currency pair? Yes, you can. It is USD KRW. Can you identify the market it's taking place in? Yes, you can. It's UAE. Now, KRW is not the home currency for UAE. Remember that. UAE has its own home currency, which is AED. The home currency for KRW, the home country for KRW is indeed South Korea. But the NDF cannot be structured in the South Korean market. In the South Korean market, you can directly trade in the foreign exchange forward market, right? So the buyers and the sellers may not even be, may not even be uh, present and having a physical presence in South Korea, but they are trading in these markets and hence it's called as an offshore market. Okay, so you're trading in currencies which are offshore currencies, you're trading in a market which is not the home currency market and therefore this market is called as an offshore market. That's the meaning of offshore. All right. Next, we take a look at an example of USD KRW NDF. Let's say the present spot rate, the rate was extracted from Bloomberg screen on 23rd of uh, January 2023 and the rate is 1235. As I explore the NDF rates, which is very difficult to get because it's an OTC product, I find that the USD KRW six month forward rate is 1240. Extending this story beyond, the trader wants to hedge the equivalent of a short position of USD 5 million. Is there a way that they can do so? Let's understand that. But before we dwell into the transaction, let's take a look at some of the important dates that are there in NDF. 
In NDF, the key dates are the first date, the trade date. This is the date on which the notional amount is fixed. Okay. And the contract is entered into to buy or sell the NDF. So the trade date is of utmost importance to capture key data points like the notional amount and the counterparty obligation. The second is the fixing date. The fixing date is 18th of June 2023. How did I get that? Because on the trade date, it would also be mentioned how long is this NDF for. So let's say it's a six month forward. Okay, let's say it's a six month NDF. The settlement date is on 19th of June 2023. The fixing date will be one day prior to the settlement date. Okay, on the fixing date, the rate called as the fixing rate is locked in. The profits and losses are calculated and they are exchanged in USD between the counterparties on the settlement date. Have you understood this concept of fixing date? So the fixing date is the date for locking in the fixing rate. Okay, the fixing rate is mutually decided between the counterparties. That's not a problem. But the fixing date is very important to calculate the PL because the transaction is going to be only settled in one single currency. So even though till now we're talking about Nostro accounts, the other foreign exchange videos I've uploaded has talked a lot about Nostro accounts, Vostro accounts, correspondent banking, movement of two currencies using chips or chaps or India's RTGS. In the case of NDF, Settlement is going to take place only in a single currency. In most cases, that settlement will take place only in USD. Okay. Let's take a look at what is a fixing rate on a fixing date. The same currency pair, let's say the first scenario is, let's explore multiple scenarios. The first scenario is USD KRW is 1200. Does the customer who has bought USD KRW have a profit or a loss? Let's calculate this straight away because without calculations, you'll never be able to know who has to pay whom. Okay, so the USD KRW rate is 1200. The fixing rate is on a fixing date. The USD KRW at 1240 is the contracted rate. So we have to compare the fixing rate with the contracted rate. The contracted rate was done on 20th of January 2023. The fixing rate was done on 18th of June 2023 that is after six months all right so remember these things are very important the customer has bought USD KRW at the contracted rate of 1240 but unfortunately the fixing rate is only 1200 therefore the customer has suffered a loss to repeat myself the fixing rate on the fixing date of 18th of June is 1200 the contracted rate is 1240 the customer has bought USD KRW. The bank has sold USD KRW to the customer. Therefore, the customer has incurred a loss. The customer has to pay this loss to the bank in USD. There is no movement of KRW at all. Okay. So profits and losses are calculated and the net profit or the net loss is only exchanged in a single currency. That's why you have a very sad dollars emoji and over here a very happy dollar emoji for the two counterparties to the trade. Let's take another example, the second scenario, okay, of the same situation. Let's say the on the fixing date, the fixing rate is 1290. The customer's PNL, is it a profit or a loss? Yes, let's calculate out with your notebooks, pens and calculators and mobile phones. The USD KRW is 1290. This is the fixing rate on the fixing date. The USD KRW is 1240 as per the contracted rate. The customer has bought USD KRW. The contracted rate is 1240. The fixing rate is 1290. Therefore, it's a profit for the customer. How is this exchanged? The USD KRW rate on the fixing date is 1290. The USD KRW rate on the contracted date is 1240. The customer has bought USD KRW. The bank has sold USD KRW. The bank has sold USD KRW at 1240. 
but the fixing rate is 1290 so it's a loss for the bank the bank has to pay the loss to the customer okay because it's a profit for the customer the loss is to be paid to the customer by the bank in usd therefore the customer is having smiley dollars whereas the bank is having unhappy dollar faces okay this is a brief understanding of ndf we'll be exploring actual calculations of notional amount etc in another video Thank you so much for listening into this video. If you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate actions, trade life cycle, or OTC derivatives, do subscribe to my YouTube channel because I provide rich, research rich, content centric videos on these topics. This is your learning partner, Sushira Hariharan, signing off for today. Thank you.